Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bikes. I'm your friend Amulan Shaktivel. Today, I am pretty excited to start a new series or playlist on Selenium. First of all, I have been using Selenium for a very long time, almost four to five years, and I have done almost forty to fifty application automation using Selenium, including my freelancing project as well as my office projects. I am a big fan of Sel Selenium. There is no doubt in it because it is open source, but the problem with selenium is we have to write a lot of code and sometimes we have to handle stale element reference exception uh, element, element not intercepted exception and then we have to manage our own uh, you know thread local to maintain the thread safety if you want to do parallel execution so there are little little caveats even though i know how to get rid of them i can write a little bit of extra code to handle those but selenite is an amazing library why because it is it is open source as well, built on top of Selenium, and it has a clean and concise API, uh, good assertion support. In case of Selenium, we have to write our own assertions using, uh, let's say, JUnit, AssertJ, TestNG, whatever the assertion library we want. But most of those cases, they weren't really customized to do the UA automation validations, right? But what if there is a library that can give us, uh, you know, pretty cool methods that we can use in UA automation directly for assertion. That's what the Selenite does. Uh, we will see a very good example, uh, you know, in the next slide. But for now, just understand the Selenite has inbuilt assertion support. Uh, it is very stable. I have automated an application using uh, Selenite, uh, which is which is making it quite easy, right? So it is very stable. And all the methods that were developed inside uh, Selenite is actually working, right? There may be uh, different libraries that we have tried, but they may not work. But in this case, all these methods are quite, you know, accurate and they work uh, perfectly. There is no boilerplate. We don't have to write a lot of code. Most of the things are inbuilt. We just need to call the right methods and then, uh, you know, use it in our code. So all we have to do is worry about the business logic. We don't worry about Selenium. We don't worry about JavaScript lake. We don't worry about scrolling. All these things are taken care by the Selenium, right? No time of related issues. As I mentioned, there is no chances of you getting stale element reference exception, you know, other other exception that we normally get. And then we don't have to even bother about the thread safety of the web driver. Well, Selenium internally handles all these things, okay? Once you create the web driver, give it to Selenium, it takes care of all the thread safety purpose for you. So you don't have to really worry about it, right? So let's see an example. Amudan, it doesn't really sounds convincing for me, but I will give you a very good example here. Let's assume that you are asked to test a Google search, right? Um, and then these are all the kind of code that we normally write, right? I'm using WebDriver Manager here to, to launch my Chrome, and then I'm loading the URL. I have to use explicit wait so that I can wait for the element to be uh, present before I do a send keys of testing many bytes. And then also I want to press enter, right? That's when the Google search will happen. Once it happens, I also want to find elements in the next page uh, with the with the X path of H3, which means I'll get a list of web elements and I want to assert whether the size of the web elements is 11. And also I want to verify whether in those 11 elements, at least one of the element is having a value of testing many bytes. And, and I'm using a stream here. You can also use for a loop or assert j, whatever, um, for your validation. But still, we are writing a lot of code here. And then you also, uh, if you notice very closely, we are launching the browser ourselves and we are closing it ourselves. We have to write at least 12 lines of code to get this done. And it is noisy and verbose. Now, let's do it with Selenite. And here comes the cool part. I am not launching the browser. By default, Selenite knows we want to run it in Chrome. Uh, let's say we want to run it in Firefox. You can set a configuration that basically opens Fire Firefox browser for you. Here, I just want to open this particular URL. And dollar here indicates find element. Instead of writing driver.find element, you can directly tell dollar. There is also aliases method for this if you don't like dollar you can also use element method which says hey try to find an element 
with the by locator strategy name of Q and wait until it is visible. This visible is similar to your explicit wait where you have to write new web driver wait until expected conditions too much of noise. Here it is, is, is as poetry as possible. So it should be visible, set the value of testing bytes and then press enter. Also notice here, um, send, send keys is what we are using here. Here we are using set value. Set value is much faster and you can prefer to use it. Let's say if you're interacting with a lot of elements. And then here the readability is missing where we are saying comma keys dot enter. Many people who are new might not able to understand what it is. But in this case, press enter is, 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 is almost poetry, right? And next, I want to find multiple elements that we use to driver dot find elements by X path. Here, double dollar indicates driver dot find elements and X indicates X path. Uh, you can also, you know, if you're if you're sure that you're going to use X path, you can use X here, or you can also use double dollar and by dot X path, whatever that you feel comfortable. And then I want to check whether it has the size of 11. And now look at this, should have is a method that helps you to write assertion and should be is something that is, you know, the it will wait for before doing some operation. So in most, it is almost like your explicit wait, the should be, the should have is like your assertion. And I want to check whether it is having a size of 11. And I also want to check whether it is having a text with case sensitive where we, we actually did this, right? We are trying to, if it is equals ignore case, and that is what exactly we are doing here, whether it is containing text, uh, testing many bytes. Again, it is text, which means it's a, it's a variable arguments. If you want to validate even four to five elements, we can pass them as well. So here, if you notice also very clearly, we are not opening the browser ourselves. We are not closing it ourselves. Everything taken care by Selenic and the code is, is very readable and uh, anyone can understand this code. So I will basically open the IntelliJ to see uh, if it actually works. We all know this will work, but you might have been doubtful whether this will work. So I'm just trying to run this test and showcase how, how cool it is. So we have written just three lines of statement to do the Google search test. So now it will find the elements and check whether the testing mini bytes is there and the test is passed. So with very less lines of code, we have achieved what we want to achieve and the readability of the test have increased many fold. So that's what I want to say. That's why I love Selenite. I have used Selenite for an application. It makes my job so very easy. Uh, even though I am very skilled, uh, I, this makes me more productive than using Selenium. I'm sure you will also love using Selenite. I, I will touch base a lot of cool stuff in Selenite about, uh, about Selenite in this playlist. So uh, leave your comments uh, below this video so that I'll make more interesting videos. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys in another great video.